Hey, this thing is huge. Check out how I built it. Boom. So what I wanted to do was build a giant table for this customer, something that when people walk in the room, their jaw would drop and they would be in awe, the sheer size and the quality of the piece. In order to do that, I had to source giant slabs from my friend Sam here, who delivers them to my workshop for me and helps me unload them and get them rocking it and rolling here. After I get them in the workshop here, I start hacking away at all the inclusions that are in the table to get the bark and the dirt and the dust out so that the epoxy can bond really, really well. It's always tough to flip some of these giant slabs. Uh, sometimes the cart likes to roll on me, but I got to be extra careful and safe when I do this, pay attention to my back. You notice that I had a mask on, and I'm using this Restore right here, which does have some dust extraction on it, but the walnut dust is usually pretty brutal on uh, my lungs, so I do, uh, I do wear appropriate PPE just to keep it out of there and make sure I stay healthy. Now if you notice these slabs are actually 190 inches long, I'm going to eventually cut this down to about 165, about 13 and a half feet, which is an absolute massive panel. This thing's going to weigh about 700 pounds when it's all completed. Due to its size, when Esco Bros shipping comes to pick this thing up and deliver it to New York, I had to go call a friend down the street to come on over and help me lift it and get it into the van with them. They bring two people, definitely needed four. You're gonna see me use the Festool track saw just with one track here, chop it off the size, a little cross cut. And then in order to get this rip cut down the length of the slabs, I've got to use the Festool connectors for these track saw guide rails. Um, the reason for that is because I want to get this line perfectly straight, this edge perfectly straight before it goes in the form for the pour. And look how big this is. This thing legitimately is about as long as my truck. Uh, it's massive. And there we go, I've finished breaking down these slabs and now I'm ready to crank through the form for the table. For the form, normally I don't build a form these days because I've got this giant pour table, but the table is just simply too big. So I've got to build a custom, custom form for it. I do that by just ripping down plywood. I rip down plywood um, for the edges, uh, for the base of the form. And then I take a whole bunch of straps and I start securing these pieces together. This uh, does two things. It secures the separate pieces together and it keeps everything on the level. Then I take some Tyvek tape and I start taping. This one took like six rolls of Tyvek tape, which is crazy because that's like $80 worth of tape by itself. After I make the bottom of the form, I secure the sides of the form with some silicone caulk and some finished nails. Now I used to do this with screws, uh, which worked just fine, except for the plies on the plywood would split every time I would put a screw in there and then it would kind of um, distort the edges of the table. So instead, what I ended up doing was just using finish nails. Tried it out once, it worked. Uh, I'm gonna go with it until uh, we have a problem with that. But a bunch of caulk on the sides, pressing down the Tyvek table, getting that side of the form up. After we rip this down, we're gonna end up getting it in the custom built form. My apprentice Nate is over here helping me get it in the form. It is just way too heavy for me to get in there on my own. So he helps me lift it and carry it. Um, and you'll notice that the 
form is actually hanging off the poor table about a foot and a half. And that ended up being totally fine. There was really no sag on it. I was really excited for that. You see the buckets here laid out and organized for the epoxy pour. I like to get really organized before I start, understand how much I'm putting in each bucket so that I don't mess up this step with the two to one ratio. I also only fill these buckets with about 12 liters each time. And the reason for that is because when I put them in the vacuum chamber, I don't want the bubbles to overflow in the bucket. And again, why do I put them in the vacuum chamber? I'm gonna put them in the vacuum chamber to remove all of the oxygen that I've whipped in there through the mixing process. We're adding a somewhat transparent glass cover. Not so transparent where you can see legs underneath, but transparent enough so that when I add a secondary color later on in this video, you can see it, you can see the depth to it. Um, it'll go about an inch deep into the table where you can see uh, the secondary color come in. I've got to pull them out of the vacuum chamber there after I get all the bubbles out of the epoxy. Um, now for the pour, this is one of the most exciting and nervous times about any of these table builds. The, the epoxy could overheat, the form could leak, and we could have a situation, but in this case it did not. I usually put a bunch of fans on it. And now here, um, the epoxy is um, the consistency of honey. And I like to say it is time to make some money when it's the consistency of some honey uh, so that I can add the secondary color and really make it pop. And you'll notice that if you go ahead on the video and you see the final, final videos and pictures of the table, and even right now, that secondary color kind of moved as the epoxy cured. It looked really deep and vibrant when I put it in, but not anymore. Take a look at the end of the video for that. But now, this is a crazy thing. I had to buy a special gantry crane to lift this 700 pound table. Normally I use the hoist that I've secured to the studs in the ceiling, or the joists in the ceiling of my studio, but I was nervous the roof would um, come down. So I bought a gantry crane and another hoist and I'm lifting it with that. And it ended up giving me a nice sense of security while moving it that I don't have with the ceiling hoist. The crane itself is rated for 2,200 pounds, so I figured I'm not going to have any issue with the 700 pound tank. And one of the best things about the hoist that I have for the crane is that it's got a remote, so I don't have to like reach, and I can pay attention to the slab itself as it's moving. Taking off the form here, this is one of the most exciting times of any build. Again, you get to see what it's going to look like when it's all set and done here. Then I gotta lower my TOT sled from the ceiling because I store it up there. And if you'd like to see how I got that in the ceiling of my studio here, hit me up in the comments and I'll give you some um, suggestions and some advice. It actually stores above the garage door, which I'm really excited that I can store it up there because it clears out all the floor space that that thing would take up because it's massive. Now I'm using Harvey G700 dust extraction system. Very efficient, very incredible, and actually very quiet, which is why um, I actually bought it because it's about 10 decibels lower than my previous system. If you want to see how I installed that, built a workbench over it, check out one of the videos here in, on my channel. Now this uh, table, in order to flatten it, took 720 passes with the router. So I got kind of bored with it being on the floor. So I decided to I decided to sit on the table and then sit on the roller chair because uh, my back was hurting me. But thankfully, on the TOT sled, it's got that stick to move it up and down. Now again, pulling out the Festool track saw to get the edges perfect, um, at least straight and square. Even though we're gonna leave a little live edge on the side, and you're gonna see my assistant go back with the restore. 
There are those Festool connectors again, getting the track nice and straight so I get a perfectly straight. And again, some more track saw work. This tool is one of those things that revolutionized the process of what I ended up doing with my tables. This allowed me to kind of make them any size and cut them back to get to the perfect measurements for my customers. Notice how long this thing is. Really, I left this in there uh, to show you how giant this table is. This thing is probably like four or five tape regular dining table sizes. It is crazy how big this piece is. Now, if I said I spent hours sanding this thing, that would be probably an understatement. It's realistically that I spent about 14 to 15 hours on a sander sanding this. This first round of sanding was rough sanding on the top and bottom. It just needed to happen before I did anything else on the table. That way I could get the base perfectly centered and organized. But again, for this base, it's massive. I wasn't able to pick it up by myself. And in this case, I'm using the ceiling hoist to lift it up and get it on top of the table because they are just too heavy for me to carry on my own without destroying my back. So I take it off the ceiling hoist, I measure it perfectly, get it centered, hit it with a pencil. Um, this is so that when um, I measure for these uh, C-channel stabilizers that I put in the bottom of the table, I get them in the exact perfect spot and they do not impede or get in the way of the base itself. Time to hit the router. Um, to get these channels cut for those C channels. Um, I tend to use these C channels when the table is just too big to kind of support its own weight with the base. And that, that was the case with this table. It is just so large, I had to put these in there. Now I had to use the extension on the track again. Um, thankful Festool's um, system all works together so that I can utilize it with the router. Realistically, if you're commenting how small my router is, it's right. It's tiny. I need a bigger one. I need the middle round. I've got the giant one. I've got the little one. I don't have the middle one. Gotta get that. Now here I'm marking for the holes for the C-channel stabilizers. Just drilling all of these things to put the screws in just to secure it. And I wanted to put these in after it was planed down and before I flipped it any more times because I didn't want this thing to break or bend or bow on, on its own weight. So these channel, these stabilizers are gonna help uh, keep it straight and true as I manipulate it in the workshop. And again, finish the bottom here. Um, so I'm lowering it down. And I've gotta lift it up again to get it flipped one more time to hit the top of it. Now the top's looking good from this far away, even though it has all of those louder marks from planing it down. Now I'm getting it back on top of the work surfaces in my studio and I'm spending another six, seven hours sanding with the RO150. This RO150 really does cut through the epoxy very, very well with little to no dust that comes up in my lungs. And at the same time I'm sanding this down, I got my assistant there in the background cranking through, um, pulling back the epoxy that seeped out where we want to keep it a true live edge and that's what Nathan's doing here with the restore really getting to it um, we got two people on this table right now look at me trying to um, make sure that it is perfectly level and flat that's what the pencil markings do, do. Um, but here we have two um, ETS 150s with the five millimeter rotation that I'm using at the same time, same hardness of pad, and using two sanders just reduced the amount of sanding time in half. 
Um, using two sanders that were the exact same um, kept the sanding patterns consistent and allowed me to track it with my eyes to make sure that I was sanding smoothly, evenly, and flawlessly. Um, got two vacuums hooked up as well. Couldn't do that on the edges. That would have been a little bit too tough. Water popping with mineral spirits on this table is always a very exciting moment. I finally get to see what it's going to look like when it gets all sealed up and ready to go. There is a close up. If you remember back in the earlier parts of the video when I added that secondary color, it looked extremely different than what you see there. That's just the way it works. Here I'm using uh, Rustic Lumber Co furniture oil on the tabletop. I love this stuff. Um, it's equivalent and if not better than Rubio, um, but it's less expensive. So in my world, that's a win. So I use the trowel method to put it on these larger tables. Um, you're going to see me kind of pour it on there and trowel it back and forth and then um, hand rub it in in a second when I take the finish off of the table. With a hard wax, you don't really want it to sit on the top very long because you just don't want it to soak in all the way. Because if it ends up soaking in too much in the soft spots, you might get kind of a white haze on top of the table over time as the, as the wax just doesn't cure on the inside. The absolute reason why I love this finish not just because it's super easy to apply, not just because I can do it in one, maybe two coats, but because when you rub your hand on the finished product, it actually feels like regular wood, like authentic natural wood without any finish on it. But it repels the water quite well. It beads, you're able to wipe it off, resists staining, that type of thing. It is absolutely incredible creates kind of a tactile tactile experience when you sit down at the table you rub your hand on the wood it feels like wood you rub your hand on the epoxy it feels like epoxy if we were to use a film finish on the table well it might be uh, more durable at the end of the day um, it just doesn't have that same feeling film finishes on top of tables or, or on top of furniture pieces when you rub your hand on it feels like plastic all the way around the table. You just don't get the same experience. And here we are with the table in all its beauty and grandeur. And I think grandeur is the right word for this thing because it is so massive. I had to stand behind it. I had to give a little bit of perspective on what this thing looks like. And then I had to be a little goofy while laying on top of it. This thing is just big. It's massive. It's huge. It's the biggest table I've ever done. I always say that because things just keep getting bigger. Anyways, I really appreciate the uh, time you spent watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't. Enable notifications so you get more videos like this. Give me some feedback in the comments. Oh, and by the way, if you are in the Midwest and you are shipping out of the Midwest, hit up Esco Brothers shipping they are fantastic look at these guys they come on out to my studio they wrap it up for me they load it into the van even though we needed my buddy tom down the street to help with this um, loading process they are absolutely great and they can take a five foot by a 13 and a half foot table all the way to new york from illinois i love it these guys are the best anyways Thanks for watching my channel. I appreciate it. And uh, please subscribe, like, and enable notifications. Peace.